So in this film we're going to be looking at the essential accessories to change the quality of the light from your simple speed light, whether it's on camera or off camera. And uh, what I'm going to encourage you to do is obviously to try and avoid from staying just with the basic light coming off the speed light itself. Uh, I'm not saying that you can't run through the rest of your creative photographic uh, kind of development with just raw flash, um, but I think you'll soon find that you'll want some uh, different types of light and you want to actually change it in as quick a way as you can. So we're just looking at some of the simple accessories that I think are essential in your creative development when you're working with speed light. So for me, uh, the first one would be the likes of a uh, third party stand adapter to be able to actually move the flash off camera. Um, why wouldn't I want to go just for softness and direction and so on? Well, basically, we, we can do a lot of that with the accessories that come with the speed light anyway. Where a speed light really comes alive is when we're using either two speed lights together or the cap um, so that one can trigger the other. So, in other words, we've got one on the hot shoe, which we can call the master, and then one which is on the likes of a stand, uh, which would be called the slave. Uh, however, some cameras have the natural ability built in communication with a speed light to find without a master on the hot shoe itself so you can actually move your speed light anywhere you want. Um, other uh, speed light uh, accessories are available to allow you to fire the flash off camera and those would be the likes of triggers and so on with it. But the real thing that um, most of you will kind of really find a, a, a great essential skill is when you invest into the right uh, adapter to go onto a, a basic studio stand um, or even a tripod to allow you to actually completely change the dynamic shape and angle of the actual light itself, whether it's being diffused or whether it's being used as a hard light. I think once you make the investment into these little uh, kind of tilt brackets um, with hot shoes or cold cold shoes, um, a hot shoe is uh, named when it has a full communication ability with the camera itself. A, a, a cold shoe gets its name from when it's basically just a mount for the speed light with no natural communication to the camera. So by allowing us to actually fix it onto a third party stand, um, it allows us to basically, as I said, change the complete controllability and should then uh, give, uh, give you a much more dynamic style of photography when you're using the flash, whether it's in TTL mode or in manual mode and things. So for my first investment would be encouragement to actually explore, can your camera control a flash or your flash off camera? Um, and if so, uh, basically invest into a cold shoe straight away, but make sure the cold shoe that you buy allows you to tilt and maneuver the actual angle of the flash head itself. That same um, uh, bracket should allow you to use the likes of a simple shoot through umbrella or a bounce umbrella. And this can add a real creativeness to your photography, especially if you're involved in any form of portraiture, um, because obviously it's gonna make the light uh, softer, controllable, and completely dynamically change its shape as well. Now, uh, a choice of umbrella is obviously completely down to you, but uh, if you're buying an all-in-one umbrella, that means that you've basically got a, uh, an umbrella that you can shoot through, so it allows the diffusion of the light as it shoots through, um, but you can also add separate covers on to allow it to bounce back. Um, I personally will often go for the independent umbrellas, uh, except when I'm traveling a long way and I need a lot of kit and I'm not sure quite what I need, then an all-in-one umbrella, and I'll have several of those, will be the right choice. Um, but as a rule of thumb, I tend to actually work with a shoot-through umbrella, a white bounce umbrella, and a silver umbrella as a standard part of my kit. So even though you're seeing the flash gun here mounted on the third-party uh, cold shoe on a studio stand with the umbrella going through the, uh, the hole in the actual uh, bracket, and it's in a position probably where it would be bouncing backlight onto the, sub, uh, the subject. This is where a shoot-through umbrella isn't the best choice um, because obviously most of the energy of the flash is gonna pass through the umbrella, illuminating whatever is in front of it, in other words, in front of the umbrella, and then act actually passing around the room before it comes back onto the subject. Even though there will be some reflectancy coming off the umbrella, not a lot of it's gonna happen. 
So if I'm looking for it to um, really uh, illuminate a scene uh, rather than illuminate the, sub uh, the subject, uh, this is a great tool to make a small flash look big in itself. If you are going to use a shoot, shoot through umbrella, and it's one of my favorite accessories, you'll see me using it a lot. I do like uh, quite a lot of directional speed light um, onto the, sub, uh, the subject. In fact, what it would be now is actually pointing towards the subject, so it would be turned around fully, and all we would see in this case would be the spoke of the umbrella, the, the pointy end, um, and basically the flash would be completely hidden to the eye of, of, the sub, of the subject. So in other words, it's pointing directly towards them. If you're into a lot of the kind of uh, one light photography, and especially when you're looking at a little bit more commercial head, a headshot, try using this directly above the camera, uh, pointing towards the subject, uh, as well as off to the sides, and it will create dynamic images for you instantly. But uh, remember, if you're buying a cold shoe adapter ang ang angle spigot, then make sure it's got a hole to actually take an umbrella as well. Obviously, um, softening the light is something that we're trying to do with a speed light, or in fact, most flash, uh, because it obviously is a very sharp light. And so if we're looking to diffuse the actual uh, contrast of the light, anything we put in front of it is going to actually help diffusion. It's also going to shape the light as well. Now, one of the things we're trying to do with a speed light, of course, is always make a small flash look bigger. And that's where even a small little softbox like we're seeing here will start to do that job straight away for us. Uh, what we can't see is internally there's an inner diffuser as well that can be removed. So in fact, what we've got here is two layers of diffusion in front of the speed, the speed light. Don't forget, of course, we've got the option to leave either diffusion cap on the speed light um, or even the wide angle diffuser popped out to increase it to three layers of diffusion. Uh, but this will give you a much soft, softer look and feel. And of course, if you're buying the right speed light, a uh, soft, soft box, it'll be able to use on the camera as well as on a third party stand itself. So um, again, make sure that the attachment to the speed light is secure, that it's not gonna frustrate you by dropping off uh, when you actually start to tilt the light at an angle. Uh, remember, if you're using the speed light off camera on a stand, most of the time you're gonna ang angle the light to actually give you better shape and dynamic to the uh, way the flash falls off on your subject. One of my favorite accessories is a softbox with a grid and the grid doesn't allow any uh, feathering of the light. So in other words, it doesn't allow it to fall off to the sides. It basically allows just the light to travel in a straight direction. It takes a lot more control, a little bit more of an advanced skill, but you soon get used to it, I promise you. Um, so in my kit, I would always travel with, in fact, two gridded soft boxes, but remember the grids are removable, and I would travel with a, uh, a normal soft, soft box as well. So I've got a, a, a three, speed light set a setup often the grids are either being used to control the light onto the subject or being used as separation light coming from the rear a snoot uh, might not be an instant thing that you might need but especially when you're trying to be creative with light controlling it into a shape uh, is a really great effect um, i use a lot of the honol adapters for shaping the light um, but you could make this out of card or paper or even tin foil to actually create a, 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 a snoot and things really. Um, just, just make sure again um, it's strapped onto the, uh, speed, uh, the speed light with gaffer tape or whatever. Um, so it's not going to actually be frustrating you when you're trying to actually do an accurate shot. But a uh, foil or aluminum uh, kind of uh, um, shape, a shaping of the light can create by itself some really great flash tech techniques like we used to use in the good old days. <clears throat> so even though the speed light comes with its own pull-out catch light card, if we add a separate third party card, a bounce card here, obviously now we're creating more of an illumination, a bigger light, a light source because it's got a bigger plane to bounce off. 
So if we uh, like the idea of uh, a little bit more flatter and bigger light, not only can we use it in the 45 degree shape like we're seeing here, but we can actually start to actually tilt the light up more in a vertical position to get a little bit more spread. So don't, so don't be afraid to invest into third party accessories like you see in this Honol card, um, but also you could make a similar thing out of a piece of white cardboard, uh, just you've got to find a way to actually strap it onto the speed light to keep it in that position. But once again, remember, if you're going to uh, create your own, then remember to create a white surface and a, a silver surface as well with the likes of aluminum. Again, when we talk about uh, controlling the light, we've already seen grids on the front of soft boxes. Of course, grids on the front of the speed light itself in the form of honeycombs will really greatly control the spillage of the light. So if we want a, a more specular, harsher direction to the light, i.e. raw flash, but we don't want it to spill all over the place, the likes of a honeycomb will allow yourself to actually give good direction and no spillage. Uh, most honeycombs, in, uh, honeycombs come in two or three different sizes, depends on the manufacturer. Next thing I'd encourage you to do is actually use some gels, whether it's in the likes of using a gel holder like we see here, or you're just fixing some colored gel onto the front of your speed light with some gaffer tape, uh, which, uh, whichever it, it is, just make sure it doesn't touch the front of the speed, the speed light flash face, because uh, obviously the explosion of flash when it goes off can actually melt the gel and actually then it could melt onto the speed light face itself would obviously then give you colored light each time you use it. So remember to keep the gel away from the speed light itself. And then uh, when you're really at the kind of uh, higher end of speed, uh, speed light, you've made that big investment. And I know that speed light technology has drastically changed over the past decade. Um, however, having supplementary battery flash to allow the speed light to recharge very quick, quickly for me is an essential tool. I'm not saying that I'm encouraging you to shoot very fast, but in fact, what I'm never going to do is really wait for the speed light's own um, batteries internally to recharge the, uh, uh, the capacitor to be able to refire again. And one of the negative things with uh, many speed lights is they don't fire just on 100%. In fact, they're allowed to fire when they've recharged up to 75%. The biggest negative of that, of course, what it then does, it basically uh, gives you an underexposed image and then you're tweaking photographs between shots. So there's some of the most basic accessories there to really drastically change your photography uh, when you're using the simple speed light to create the light.